Not too long ago, I mentioned that Funko was making vinyl pop figures for both DuckTales and Darkwing Duck. So naturally, I went out and got the whole set. Let's check this stuff out. Hey everybody, I'm Seanicus, and this is a vinyl pop figure of Scrooge McDuck. Now, I'm not a huge collector of pop figures, but this thing, this is special. And it's special because it's something I've never found before. When I was a kid, I used to keep and collect the, the stuffed toys, the plushes of DuckTales, and I really loved these things, but I could never find a Scrooge. And that's because Scrooge didn't exist as a plush. In fact, as my entire childhood went by without me ever finding a Scrooge McDuck toy. But now I have this, the first Scrooge McDuck toy or collectible I've ever owned. And that's really exciting to me. So exciting that I, I just kind of had to get the whole set. So what we're going to do here is a quick impromptu unboxing and review and look at all these DuckTales and Darkwing Duck Funko Pop figures. And I'm really excited for this. So let's check them out. Because I'm not a collector, I haven't really ever done a lot of unboxing. So we might skip around here and only really show the full unboxing of a couple of figures, but we're gonna take a look at them all. But let's start with the man who started it all, Scrooge McDuck. And it's kind of cool. It's a really nice little box. Like all Funko boxes, it's got a number up there that tells you what the number is. Scrooge McDuck, a vinyl figurine, and then other languages. And of course the art it's based on, which is just really cute. Look at that, look at that Scrooge art. It is just a really great little rendition of him, really accurate. And I think this is why I like the DuckTales figures more than normal Funko Pops, because cartoons typically have larger heads than, you know, other characters. So a human Funko Pop with black eyes and oversized heads looks a little weird to me. But this, this looks like a cartoon. It looks perfect and it fits it really well. So you have the art on the side. You also have some uh, art, some classic art of Scrooge and the boys and a cart on the back of the box. It's quite nice. And then you can see the other ones in the series. You've got Scrooge, Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Webby right there. Collect them all. And this is Scrooge McDuck number 306. So let's open him up just to get it started. I don't think there's a lot of packaging in these Funko boxes. I'm pretty sure they're they're pretty, uh, pretty simple. Let's go ahead and put that guy down there. And, uh... And that's our Uncle Scrooge. Look at that. It's actually, what's really cool, the hat is, <laughs> his hat is big because his head is big. Normally, like, Scrooge's hat is a little bit, a little bit off kilter on the back of his head. But here you get the whole, the whole view here. I really like the spectacles on it. They're actual, you know, see-through glass. And I, I mean, I guess that makes sense because most of what differentiates the design of Scrooge McDuck from Donald Duck is the spectacles and the whiskers on the side. Uh, he's got his spats, he's got his blue and red uh, inverse colors from the comic style tunic there. Uh, <laughs> the duck tail that sticks out, all proper and adorable. Um, a cane, he's got his cane, that's very nice, that's a magic pogo cane. Most important thing though, how you know this is really Scrooge McDuck and what he cares about, he's got his number one dime right there in, uh, in his in his hand there. That is, that is just, let's see if we can get up to the camera. There you go, number one dime, that's fantastic. So. It's off to a really good start. My figure does have one flaw, because you know these things, I don't know if they're hand painted or machine painted, but they're not all perfect. Mine's got a little bit of red on the back of his coat there. You can barely see it, so not a big deal though, because you display these things face out, at least I do. I don't need to be looking at the back, of, you know, turn around and see his ducktail every now and then, but that's our Uncle Scrooge. Now we don't just have ducktails. Um, I also made sure to find, these are actually really sooner, they get way sooner than the original DuckTales. I got these at Comic-Con earlier. I got Darkwing Duck and Launchpad, because Launchpad's in both series. So I knew when I saw that the Darkwing Duck series was out, it's gonna have to get Launchpad to complete the DuckTales lineup. So here's my Launchpad, my quack. But let's not open him yet. Let's, let's open the lead of the other show. I have Darkwing Duck. And I've actually opened this one before. This is a bit special. I almost, I almost brought this out and showed you guys in a different video. But this is sort of part of an ongoing project to me. Uh, I'm not into collectibles too much, like I told you earlier. I'm not much of a collectible guy. I'm also not much of a celebrity uh, celebrity signature guy. But at Comic Con, I found this at the at one of the stores, and I thought, you know, Darkwing Duck. It's a really nice Darkwing Duck with the whole imposing, like you know, you have his attitude in there. It's great. But I remembered that James Silvani had a table at Comic-Con, and I love talking to James. He's so nice and so fun to talk to, so I thought, okay, well, I bought the figure. I'll go walk over there. I'll buy the latest Darkwing Duck uh, omnibus comic that I don't have that he's got in stock, and I'll talk to him, and maybe I'll ask him to sign the cape of Darkwing Duck. And I got there, and he decided not to sign the cape, and I was like, okay, well, it's 
that's too bad. That's where I wanted to sign it. But he had a reason for that. So he signed he signed the top of his hat. You got James Savalini. You got uh, Aaron Sparrow, the writer from the series. And then standing right next to him, by pure coincidence that day, because he wasn't there before, was Tad Stones himself, the creator of Darkwing Duck. So now I've got, <coughs> excuse me, I've got Tad, I've got James, and I've got Aaron, all on my Darkwing Duck figure. And as Tad was signing it, he said, I've got, I've got a mission for you, a goal. And he said, I left the top of the hat blank. So if you ever, if you ever, ever come across Jim Cummings and you've got a Sharpie, you can complete the trifecta or the, the quad, the quartet, the quartet and get uh, Jim Cummings to sign the hat. So that's my next goal, is to get Jim Cummings to sign the hat. Not a lot of a signature guy, but I'm working to make this the uh, the ultimate little figurine for Darkwing Duck. So there's my signed Darkwing Duck. I'll put him right next to Scrooge. And let's, uh, let's take a look at some of these other figures. All right, so I've got most of the figures unboxed now, but before we take a look at them, I want to unbox just one more live, because Launchpad is the figure that kind of bridges the gap between Darkwing Duck and DuckTales, and his his figure is in the Darkwing Duck series, which means his box is a little bit different than the Scrooge McDuck one we took a look at er earlier. Uh, again, it's the same standard thing. He's number 297. He's Launchpad McQuack. You have the same, you know, cute design sitting there on the back. But if you look carefully on the art on the back, the art is all of St. Canard's backdrop, the kind you might see on the DVD cover or just in general promo art. So it's just a little bit different looking of a box, but, you know, overall still the same. He's still launch pad. He still belongs to DuckTales just as much, if not more, than he belongs to Darkwing Duck. So we gotta just, we gotta take him out and put him with all of his friends here. Let's get, uh, get launch pad out. And, you know, the launch pad figure is really nice because he, he totally embodies... He multiply bodies both of them, you know? So Launchpad and Darkwing Duck was a little bit more cartoony. He kind of had bigger shoulders and a bigger jaw a little bit. I mean, it was it was the same character and the same design, but just the style of the show was just a little more cartoony. And I feel like this is kind of a good mix of them both. You have, you know, it's total like giant, giant jowl jaws and, and it's good. He's good proportions. I don't know, he looks good. He's got the classic, classic outfit, the weirdly tight fitting web shoes. He looks nice, but he's not the only one we have here. We've got we got everyone. There's quite a lot here. I don't think I can keep them all in camera. <laughs> Let's put Launchpad down. Let's take a quick look at the triplets. I love the triplets because... Well, I haven't actually looked at these yet. This is literally my first time looking at them. I just took them out of the box and put them on the shelf. But what I like about them is, even though they don't have too much distinct personality in the original DuckTales, they all are a little bit different here. You can see, let me see if I can pick them up. You can see they each have their own pose. You have Louie with his hands that are more calmly in front of him. Huey is, you know, wannabe leader. He's got his arms crossed and uh, and he's sitting there like looking at the situation. And Dewey's got his arms on his hips, kind of all sassy. So you got the, he's being a little sassy talkbacker. He's the leader and he's a little bit more shy. And I don't, I don't think they really showed those traits too much in the original series in my mind, but uh, it's it's sort of nice to see that they're not just the same mold. It's a nice touch, giving them all something a little bit distinct. Though I'm, I'm pretty sure the head is exactly the same, all of them. But, you know, they are triplets. You can't can't really fault them too much for that. Um, they're all pretty cute, but what I'm going to look at here for a second directly is, is Louie. Because Louie wears green, and so by default he was my favorite when I was a kid. But also, because I have my only other Louie toy right here, you know, and, and there's a couple of... A couple of differences between them that uh, that are really not too minor. So the Louie stuffed toy from the original DuckTales run, this guy, you notice his hat has the black and green here. Uh, instead, he's got green and darker green. And this is actually more like what it was in the show. Uh, this is sort of more of a mix between the comic and the show. And it also says Louie on the front. So just in case you didn't know that green was Louie, because, you know, he's the leftover one. Uh, for There was an old joke, you know, Huey is a hue of red. Bluey is, I don't know, blue... Not Bluey, Dewey. I'm getting it wrong, but anyway, it's, it's a really nice little figure. I like that the hat colors are a little bit different, something nice and distinct. Um, one thing I really like, however, about this set is the Webby figure. And I was never a big Webby fan, to be honest. Webby was someone I found kind of annoying in the original series. I didn't like her a lot, but she is a distinctly different head sculpt than what you get from Huey and Dewey. Not only because she has a bow instead of a hat, but because she has these... Uh, these, these hairs that go up and backwards. But another thing about her that's really important is she has her Quacky Patch doll. Check that out right there. And I bring this up a lot in the comments of YouTube because in my other videos where I talk about the trailer and the teasers and the first episode 
of the new DuckTales series from Disney XD, people say, look on the wall, there's an arrow going through the original Webby design, but that's not what it is. That's an arrow going through the Quacky Patch doll, which is something she carried around with her and sometimes kept things in in the original series. So it's kind of cool. That's an important part of her character. It's nice to see that little nod there. Um, we've also got Goslin from Darkwing Duck. Oh, Webby fell down. That's it gonna happen. And she's got, she got her hands out in this very like excitable pose, you know, and that's very embodiment of her character. So I'm, I'm really impressed. I've never really collected pop figures before and the ones that I've received as gifts are kind of generic, you know, just Superman standing there looking tough. But these, these have a lot of personality for who they are as characters. And they have accessories that make them interesting. And that brings me to one more surprise I brought with me. So I said I went and collected all of the DuckTales and Darkwing Duck figures. And I did, but that's not everyone that's here. The back of these boxes shows, you know, five figures, but there's a sixth one. And I didn't know about this until the day that I went out to find these in stores. And the sixth one is a GameStop exclusive Magicka Dispel. And I got this, I almost didn't get Magicka Dispel because I didn't know if I wanted any of the villains, just some of the cute ones, but my wife insisted. So here we have it, Magicka Dispel, GameStop exclusive. And, uh, and let's let's check her out because there's something about her I really like as well. Not only is, you know, Magic of Spell one of the most iconic villains of the series. To the, oh, <laughs> she fell out. To the extent that uh, she's one of the most requested villains about where is she in the new Disney XD DuckTales. But it's a really nice figure because not only, again, does it have a lot of personality. You've got her hand out here. She's casting a spell. She's being Magicka. But you've got Poe. And Poe is her little, uh, her little bird friend here. And I don't exactly remember the storyline but when we looked it up, just to make sure we had the name right, Poe turns out to be her brother turned into a raven somehow? I, I really don't know the story, but it's it's another nice figure. You got, you know, her eyebrows, she's got, you know, her half, her half cocked eyelids down there, a lot of personality. Um, again, and it's, it's, it's like, it's like Webby here with, with her little accessory. Goslin with with her her very energetic pose and each of the boys having their own pose I really like the amount of personality they put into each one of these figures You know, it's it's more than just here. I am, you know I mean launchpad is almost the most boring because he's just arms down here I am this character, you know this piece of nostalgia, you know, but the other characters they all have something about them Darkwing's pose, you know that, that kind of shows off his ego about how great he thinks he is or or Scrooge focusing on Here's my number one dime. I I uh, uh, I'm tougher than the toughest, smarter than the smartest, I've earned it, I made it square. All these little little pieces of who the character are embedded in the molds. And so I think I think that's really nice about them. They're a little bit nicer than I expected them to be. Especially I think I, I think my favorite is probably Goslin, just because that that pose is just pure overexcited Goslin getting ready to run forward and ruin Darkwing's day. Um, they're really nice figures, and I think I think if you want to collect figures, if you like collecting pops, you'll probably collect them anyway. If you don't like collecting pops like me, and you, you just want some cool DuckTales and Darkwing Duck figures, these are really nice. And, and I'm not going to do a lot with them, because again, I'm not much of a collector, but I'm going to be really happy to have these on my shelf. Um, that's it for now. Just a quick unboxing video, a little look at these cool toys I bought. Uh, I'll be having more analysis videos coming later on. I'm writing two or three of them right now. I'm also experimenting with maybe launching a new gaming channel for Let's Play videos. Uh, so I, when I have gaming reviews here, I can you know put the footage I use when I'm working on those and coming up with my thoughts over there. So let me know what you think about those in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. More videos coming in the future. Let me know what you want to see. Let me know what you don't want to see. And I'll catch you later. Till next time. Take it easy.